And now our feature presentation was written by Nuka Cola Quantum. You can find it on the SCP Wiki in a link in the description below. It is under a Creative Commons 3.0 share alike attribution license. Hello, everyone. If you could please take a seat, we can get started. Right. <clears throat> For a few minutes on the 27th of April, 1986, a Floridian satellite operator, pissed at the cost of HBO's pricing, was able to hijack their eastern coast feed with a message of protest, threatening to do the same to Showtime. He was caught by the Federal Trade Commission before he could make good on this threat. A year later, on the 22nd of November, 1987, the signals of two Chicago television affiliates were taken over, subjecting people to a man in a rubber Max headroom mask, dancing in front of sheet metal, making pop culture references before having his rear end smacked with a fly swatter by a French maid. Despite the FCC and federal investigators' best efforts, no one knows who did it to this day. Broadcast signal intrusion, pirate television, Radio jamming. These have all been concerns ever since the public was first able to afford the equipment necessary to do these things. Normally, it was left in the hands of the FCC or Ofcom, whichever regulator outside the veil has jurisdiction over the affected territories. However, there are always the incidents that, obviously, they cannot handle. Take, for example, a fiasco that took place in 2003 in Parker, Arizona. Hundreds of children, expecting to see the premiere of a new episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, instead literally lose half an hour of their lives when the transmission is overridden and shows a new spheric info hazard that briefly, but mercifully, leaves them comatose. Or in 2014, when a cross-dimensional bleed results in emergency alert systems across Utica, New York's radio waves, warning its citizens that the sun is about to go supernova within 24 hours, causing widespread riots and hundreds of millions of dollars in property damage before the Foundation is able to intervene. Or how an advertising war between Westhead Media and Vikander Need in the greater wisconsin Ontarian area, across TV and radio in 2019, nearly culminates in a broken masquerade scenario. These aren't things that can simply be dealt with with viewer complaints or fines. And that is where Suppression and Archival Site 247, and by extension, the Department of Anomalous Broadcasting steps in. With the cooperation of numerous broadcasting regulators across the globe, some of the most powerful signal retrieval equipment on and off the market, and the tireless work of Stationary Task Force Pi 247, calling all stations. Hey, uh, why do we name it after the worst Genesis album? I'm sorry, what? I said, why did we name it after the worst Genesis album? Because the Department of Virology's task force already called dibs on In the Air tonight. I guess formality is out the window now. Anyway, we aren't just paid to sit around and watch TV or listen to the Top 40 all day, on the off chance of finding something anomalous. Broadcasting also extends to the web, so we also cooperate with Site15 in suppressing anything weird that crops up on YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, you name it. Don't even get me started on how many urban exploration channels nearly stumble upon old Foundation bases. And while I can't say too much about it, given most of the details are above even my clearance level, Dr. Erstwhile and the fine folks in the paratelecommunications are making amazing progress on something that will revolutionize inter-Foundation correspondence and encryption. So for those of you assigned to that sector, you lucky bastards. Hmm? Oh, speaking of the good doctor, allow me to introduce you to some of the other key members of staff you'll become acquainted with during your tenure at the department. Gaston Yu Kyrie, our esteemed director, and who to report your co-worker to if they're watching the game instead of looking for veil breaches. Let me nip two buds right away for everyone. One, yes, he has heard all of the jokes about his first name. Every single one. So if you're being clever, asking if he's good at expectorating, you're not, too. We don't know what the U stands for. He said every single one of our guesses is wrong, and he's not going to correct us. Amelie Nika is our lead researcher, for those of you who have transferred from Site-15. And yes, they're related. No, she does not think Jock's band is good either. If Director Kyrie is not available for you to inform about your colleagues slacking off, she is your next best bet. And of course, if it weren't for her, negotiations between the Foundation and the French ARCOM would have been much more difficult. Don't worry, folks. We're almost done. I just need to give a quick rundown of our site's sectors. 
we're on the ground floor right now. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose in the grand scheme of things, other than for us to use as part of our cover as a radio tower station. But the view up here, to the rest of the Aspen Mountains, is gorgeous. Floor B1 is where our research is focused. Hundreds of us scanning signals, tapping into satellite feeds, acting off of online tips and reports, and sending things off to our boys in Pi 247 when needed. 24-7 pun is intended. Emil's office is in the corner where it smells the most like herbal cigarettes. You couldn't miss it even if you wanted to. Floor B2 is our archival area, where we keep copies of all the recordings from our investigations. From one-off extra-normal events to ongoing groups of interest campaigns. It's not just short clips here and there either. We actually have all of Doctor Who's missing episodes intact with no cuts, tucked away in a filing cabinet somewhere because by pure luck a public access television channel in Boston had been broadcasting them non-stop for years, and they'd all been meticulously taped by someone who was trying to get millions from the Beeb in exchange for returning them. Preservationists would have had a field day if we hadn't got to the guy first. Oh well. Floor B3 houses our paratelecommunications division. It's because of their efforts that our comms have only milliseconds of delay, are crystal clear, and don't get fucked up by all the Faraday cages that we have laying around here. There's a bunch of more technical information that I could give you about what's down there and their duties, but that's a conversation that's better given by Ray. And finally, there's Floor B4. That's where we contain the physical skips that fall under our purview. There's not that many, given the majority of what we handle are suppressed, recorded, or archived, but it's plenty spacious, just in case. Most of them are just old CRT televisions that kept receiving analog signals even after the digital switchover, but we've also got a Fox News satellite that became sentient and nearly made a town in rural California a crater. Yes, it can communicate, and yes, it's just as racist as you'd expect. Emil's giving me the wrap it up gesture, so that'll do for our little primer. Welcome to Site 24-7 and the Department of Anomalous Broadcasting. What will we pick up next? Well, you'll have to stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who has pledged at $100. With luck, I have two new cables coming in today because my camera still technically works and my computer works fine, but they're not communicating with each other anymore. So I figured the problem that I was having was cables. So on the first one, I actually had some money from Patreon. I bought two sets of new cables of different kinds. <laughs> A USB and a uh, HDMI, and we're going to see if they work. If so, you'll be able to see me in the next video. If not, I will have to come up with other solutions. Either way, it's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday.